Hey Pyro, are you just getting started in wood burning and you're coming across all these mistakes that you're making and you can't figure out what you're doing wrong? We are going to hear not only from me, but from our fellow Pyros who have piped in to share some of their biggest mistakes and some of their biggest lessons learned so that you can skip the hard part and start burning in satisfying ways. I'm Jenny Lizenby, your Pyro Professor. Let's burn. Really quick, I just want to point out that each one of these mistakes could be its own entire video and some of them an entire series and some of them I have done videos and series on and I'll go ahead and share those because those are ready for your big beautiful eyes to watch. And if there is something in here that you would like a deep dive on or you would like to hear more about, please put that in the comments so that I can look at that and hopefully make a video for you. One of the biggest mistakes I see beginners making is choosing the wrong burner. Now, if you are just starting out and you have no idea if you even like wood burning, then I highly recommend you just get the cheapest thing out there and just see if you like it. With one caveat, there are cheap and then there are inexpensive. I recommend the inexpensive ones. Some of my favorite tools, I'll go ahead and list them down in the description for you to make it really easy. But there are some beginner tools that I recommend over other beginner tools. And one of them is the VersaTool, the Walnut Hollow VersaTool. And I will put a link in the description to where you can get one if you want one. And a reason for that is because it has a good variety of nib selection and it also has a heat dial. If you don't have a heat dial or a temperature regulator or a rheostat or anything like that that controls the temperature of the burner, you have to rely solely on skill. And that is something that is extremely, extremely hard. Some people will not buy the right machine because they feel like the voltage isn't going to match their, uh, their country's voltage because this is in the United States and this is in Australia or in the UK or pick a topic. There are lots of power inverters and you know, adapters that you can get. And then you simply get the burner that you want. I wanna give a big shout out to today's sponsor who is Bearwood Supply Company. They're actually one of my favorite companies that I like to shop for for my pyrography goodies. They have lots of wood burning tools. They have my favorite wood burning tool, the Colwood Detailer. They also have the Colwood Super Pro, which is an excellent machine. And if you haven't gotten your kit yet, you can actually go get a burn savvy kit. They actually have a cleaning kit. I really appreciate their customer service. I really appreciate how quickly they take care of my fellow pyros and that is something that I highly respect especially in a small company like theirs. The link is in the description. I highly recommend you go check them out. Another mistake is not testing out the heat first. Sometimes when you are working with different woods the heat that you need to use in order to get a decent burn is going to be different. So it's really important to test those out first. My email subscriber, Wolf K from North Carolina, USA says that he always tests out the type of burn that he wants on a blank wood piece, preferably the same type of wood as the original. And then he can adjust the temperature and the pressure used to have a successful burn. And that is really, really important. Make sure that you are testing out those burns. Another common mistake is using the wrong nib for the technique that you want to get. Now, I am a firm believer that yes, you can use any nib to get any technique that you want, but some nibs are going to take a lot more skill to get certain techniques. So you want to use the nibs that are going to help you make this the easiest and best process as possible. Another email subscriber, Colin Atkins from New York, USA said, when I started, I didn't really know what heads to use, heads meaning nibs or tips, till I started playing around with them and figuring out what they are for. And this is something that I highly recommend that every pyro does. Go try out all the nibs, go see what they do. See how it feels in your hands, how it works when you manipulate that pen, that nib, and you make it into something go test it out. In fact, I have an entire series that I did on different wood burning nibs, really popular wood burning nibs, both for solid point burners and for wire nib burners. And if you want to check those out, I'm going to put that right up here in the corner for you. So go check that out. Our fellow pyro from Texas, her name is Avery S. She explains that going too fast is also a problem. And she's right. Here's what she says. Rushing I would rush while drawing the lines out with the wood burner, and the mistakes were especially obvious when the grain changed. The lines would be blobby and have undefined edges. When I slowed down and really took my time with the lines, they were much smoother and more professional. 
Amen. Couldn't say it any better. Next mistake is using dirty nibs. Okay, dirty nibs are going to keep your burner from making the best connection possible with the wood. Okay, when you start burning, a lot of times that carbon, that ash, it all starts to build up on the nib and it can create a barrier between the burner and the wood. What you wanna do is you wanna polish that off and keep burning it if you would like to figure out how to clean it without destroying it, I have another video for you and I will put right up here for you. A common problem that I see is starting with the hardest stuff first. I can't tell you how many people say, I just started wood burning and I'm so excited to do a portrait. And whatever else they say just kind of trails out the other side of my head because I'm like, ah, don't start with a portrait. Those are one of the hardest things to start with. Start with natural lines like tree branches and things. If you make a little blob, nobody notices. Don't start with lettering because if you put a little blob on the letter A, everybody notices. Don't start with grandma's portrait because if you put a little blob on grandma's face, everyone's going to notice. Don't do that to grandma. Don't do it to yourself. <laughs> Don't start with the hard stuff first. Start with those natural lines, okay? Grasses, landscapes, uh, flowers, those kinds of things. Cassandra from Arkansas says, a wood burning mistake I seem to keep making is not sanding my pieces enough. The wood's ridges make it hard to get a nice line and makes burning the piece very frustrating. I can totally attest to that. I actually didn't use to sand the wood because I am queen of skipping it if it makes it easier and faster. But I found that sanding made it exceptionally easier. So now that is a step I do not skip. Sometimes you can get that real rough cut wood and it's really hard to use. And sometimes you get a smooth piece of wood and you don't see the little rough cuts that are there, the little splinters that have come up and risen since it was cut. So it's really important to sand it down. I typically use a 220 grit. You can do it finer. I just like it to be at that grit because that's the grit that a lot of sealants like to apply to. And so I definitely uh, use the 220 grit a lot. Here was a good one from one of our pyros. Don't hold tiny pieces in your hand while burning. <laughs> now this might seem like a no-brainer, but you would be surprised how many people hold an itty bitty piece of wood and try to burn something on it. Like when you're burning jewelry or when you're burning uh, keychains and things like that. And this reader, L.L. Spurlock from Missouri, suggests that you use a beanbag. And as many of you know, I love beanbags. I like to rest my hand on them and I like to put round objects on them like bowls and gourds. And that's another recommendation that she had. She says, if you are working on a curved surface, such as eggs, you do not want to be relying solely on your fingertips to steady them. Use a bean bag to cradle small or curved pieces. That was her recommendation, and I think that's a great recommendation. If this video has been helpful so far, it'd be amazing if you would hit that like button and let YouTube know this is a video that other pyros need to see. Choosing the wrong kind of wood is another common mistake. Choosing wood that is really uneven grain or that's really sappy or green or worse, that's treated or chemically stained or, you know, pallet wood, barn wood, all of those things have been treated. Veronica from Los Lunas, New Mexico says, I learned not to burn on wood that's been treated with any chemicals. As we burn, we inhale the chemicals on the wood. This in turn can make us sick instantly and possibly have some long-term effects. I've actually known some people who have had some pretty crazy reactions. I personally have not, thankfully, but it's really important to make sure that you are burning on wood that is not gonna make you sick. And if you are intentionally burning wood that's not good for you, that you have plenty of ventilation. And that is another mistake that one of our readers pointed out, Timothy Bauman from Ohio, who talked about his fan with carbon filters and air purifier that he uses. In fact, he says that he runs it on a timer for two hours afterward, so it circulates the entire basement air several times. 
to get that air squeaky clean. And there are other things that you can do. You can use a mask, you can use uh, table fans that have carbon filters and things like that. I have a table fan that I use and I really like. I'll put that link in the description for you also. So there are lots of ways that you can get good ventilation. Of course, you can open windows. You can go outside. If it's winter time though, you have to be a little more creative, which is what Timothy was trying to point out. So make sure you're using plenty of ventilation. Another big problem is over fixing mistakes. Okay, sometimes we have a tendency to get excited so we burn things too fast, too hot, too hard, and then we end up with mistakes and then we try to fix it. And then we try to fix it too much. So instead of gently scraping off the carbon and the ash and things like that, we like carve it out and it's too much. <laughs> Which was Connie's problem. Connie from at Connie Coffee 8372. Connie said, I tried wood burning letters, but got outside the letter. I tried using a razor blade to remove unwanted burns, but it took too much of the wood. Connie, this is a common problem. You are not alone. There are many different ways that you can remove mistakes. Razor blades are one of them, but a common mistake is to carve too much of the wood out. You don't really wanna carve the wood, you want to gently scrape off the black part, the carbon, the ash that has built up. That's what you wanna do with that razor blade. You don't wanna be carving into the wood unless you made a really, really deep mistake. And then you have to carve the whole thing out and smooth it out and burn it again. Don't ask me how I know. That was really hard to fix. <laughs> now, sometimes beginners think that they need to have a piece of wood that is just as clean and clear as a piece of paper. And I just want you to know, that's not always possible. It's wood, it's natural. You're going to have different wood grain in it. You're going to have knots in it. Things like this, a lot of times beginners can be very frustrated with knots like this. And let's be real, not just beginners, all wood printing artists can be pretty frustrated with a knot like this. However, you can turn this into so many different things. You can turn that into a bunny ear. You can turn it sideways and turn that into a landscape. There are so many ways that you can use the knots in the wood. And if you are looking for perfect wood, chances are you're going to have to buy a few extra to make sure that you have some to spare. And then you wanna make sure that you are buying artist grade. And then you will be sure that you are getting something that has fairly minimal blemishes. Now, you can also work totally around them like this piece, that middle part is a knot. It had a really light colored knot. And so I turned that into the sunshine. I had a knot on this piece, my cow piece. I love this piece. And it has a knot right in the middle. It's hard to see. And that's on purpose. I intentionally placed it in a spot where it was going to blend in. And that is a common problem is if you are working on something, say a portrait, and I've done this before, where you put the pattern down and suddenly you realize that you got a piece of wood grain going right across the face. It's not gonna work. You either need to turn the wood, twist it to a different angle if you can, or you need to turn the wood over or use a different piece and then use that piece of wood for something else, okay? But typically you can work into the project all the different blemishes in the wood and use it to kind of enrich your piece sometimes. Now there were several comments about the mistakes that people made with shading, but that really is a topic for another video. There are so many elements and aspects of shading where that can go wrong, okay? So many. So we're gonna save that for another video. Just don't start with shading, okay? Natural lines, then line art and lettering, and then shading. Another mistake is using the wrong kind of finish on the project. So if you are doing a food safe project, say wooden spoon or cutting board, if you're using things like polyurethane on it, that's not really food safe. And so you need to not be using that kind of finish on it. Also, if you're looking to do some outdoor projects, you wanna make sure that you are doing outdoor finishes that have a higher UV resistance. However, that leads me to the next mistake. Outdoor pieces eventually fade, especially if they're in direct sunlight. One of our email pyros, LL Spurlock from Missouri says, outdoor pieces will eventually fade no matter which sealant you apply. If those pieces are displayed in direct sunlight, they will eventually fade. 
and she's right. So you definitely want to make sure that you are placing it out of direct sunlight, using things that have UV protection, using sealants that have UV protection, and then reapplying that every year. I have some outdoor pieces. I wanted to test this out and I put them up about six years ago. One of them is entirely gone, just wiped clean. You can't even see it. And the other one is really starting to show signs of fading, but it took it a couple of years and I did not add extra coats. When you add those extra coats, it does prolong the life of the burn. And when you use wood that's dry, that helps also. So lots of things there, but just understand if you can keep it out of direct sunlight, that is best for the longest lasting burns outside. Another mistake that this same pyro shared is about how sealants can affect your wood. This is something a lot of pyros make mistakes on. When you are doing shading on any piece of wood, your sealant is going to darken that wood. Regardless of what kind of wood you use, regardless of what kind of sealant you use, they all darken it, okay? They all make the wood look a little bit wet. Matte finish looks the least wet, but you have to be careful because sometimes matte finish, if you're using it with like watercolor and things like that, sometimes that can cause a filmy finish and kind of get a little milkiness in there. So you have to be careful. She shared a story about how she had burned a beautiful piece on walnut. And if you're not familiar with walnut, that's a little bit of a darker wood. And she spent a lot of time, it's a hard wood, so it's going to take a lot more time. And after all of that, she learned that sealants were going to darken her work. So she looked up what kind of sealants would be best, researched it, found what she felt was best, and it still darkened the wood to the point that her hard work was just lost. Once it darkens that wood, a lot of your shading just kind of fades away. It's kind of sad. <laughs> and I've made that mistake too. It's a common, common, common mistake. She recommends if you're using a darker wood to make sure that you are using a bolder design. And I would back that up. And I would also add that whatever you do, make sure that your shading is not so slight that a sealant is going to totally make it disappear. Another common mistake is pushing. Now pushing isn't necessarily wrong. It's just hard. Okay. Pushing forward, it fights the grain. And a lot of times you end up pushing into the wood grain and digging a hole, which is not fun. So pushing can be really, really hard. It takes a little more finessing, it takes a little more skill that you are holding the nib in such a way that it's not going to catch on the wood and bounce. Okay. Those are really, really frustrating situations. I really recommend that you pull. And that's one of the techniques that I teach in my courses. If you wanted to learn more about wood burning techniques for beginners, I've got a whole video for you right there. And you can also join my YouTube membership. And we have three different tiers that you can choose from where you can learn the techniques that you are most ready for. You can watch this video right here to see what level suits you best. Another mistake is using too much pressure. Even if you're pulling it towards you, if you are pressing into the wood, you're going to fight the grain more. Okay. What you want to do is glide across the top, just nice and smooth. You don't want to be pressing down into it. If you are doing that and you're looking to engrave it, then you need to make sure that you are using uh, the right nib, like a, a sharper nib for those sharper edges and a rounder nib for those rounder edges so that when you do encounter the wood grain, then you can uh, cut through it a little bit easier, okay? Another fellow pyro explained his woes about learning this the hard way. And it wasn't just about pressure, but it was also about too high a heat. Here's what he had to say. He says, I have a light temperature controlled wood burner and started off with a high heat setting. I wanted to burn thin lines and found that the lines were much too broad and too deep. I found that starting at a lower temperature with less pressure got me the lines I wanted. So a big thank you to Wolf K because that illustrates perfectly what I'm trying to say here. You do not want to be pressing really hard and you don't want to have too high of a heat. It's going to cause thicker lines. It's going to cause other kinds of problems. So you just want to make sure that you are using light pressure, low heat, and you're moving slowly enough that you can get a decent burn. One of her fellow pyros named Paul says, not enough practice is one of the biggest mistakes that he made. And I would say that that's true of a lot of pyros. Make sure you're practicing. And I would also say that this goes along with one of the gravest mistakes that I see pyros making, and that is giving up too early. 
don't give up so fast, okay? Just because you don't get it right off the bat doesn't mean that this can't be a super satisfying, exciting art for you, okay? One of the biggest things is that people look at it like, like they should be just as good at this as they are with their pencils. What they forget is that they've been burning, or not burning, <laughs> but they've been using these pencils pretty much all their lives. And they're just now getting started with wood burning. You're not gonna be as good at a wood burner as you would be with the pencil, just by nature. You need a little more practice, right? This medium is totally different than graphite pencils or charcoal or paint or anything else, really. So don't give up. In the words of our fellow pyro, Timothy Bauman from Ohio, I'd like to say this, mistakes, we've all made them. And the best way to progress is to keep burning and learning. Amen to that. Of course, if there are other mistakes that you have made and you know about, maybe some other lessons that you've learned, please share them in the comments. We all grow when we share as a community, okay? I wanna hear from you, Pyro. Remember to join me in the YouTube membership to get more in-depth training on wood burning techniques. If you like videos like this one, then you're definitely going to love this video, which I highly recommend that you watch next. And if you want more videos like this, hit that subscribe button because I'm going to be sharing a whole lot more. Later, Pyro.